The golden age of porn pretty much killed sexploitation films in the 1970s. I mean, why pay for teasing softcore when you can watch the real thing? But some filmmakers survived and Russ Meyer was one of them. Because despite, you know, not going hardcore, he still made movies that were funny and sexy and worth watching. And then he made this one. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at Up from 1976. In 1975, Russ Meyer had a pretty big hit on his hands with Super Vixens, and this was the follow-up. It was not a big hit. Let's see why. We open with Kitten Natividad in her film debut, spouting some nonsense as the Greek chorus. She's completely nude, so I can't show you much of that. She'll show up a few times throughout the film, but like I've said, it doesn't really matter because it's just complete nonsense. She just makes an already weird and confusing movie weirder and more confusing. But I still had to learn all those lines, which took me about a month to memorize them because they make no sense. Then we hop over to a sex dungeon where Adolf Schwartz, who bears a striking resemblance to another German-speaking Adolf that history buffs might be familiar with. So he's being um, serviced by various people, and I can't really show you much of this either. There are various buxom ladies doing various buxom things with Adolf, and uh, the whole time this is going on, a guy dressed up as a pilgrim is whipping him. This is probably some sort of statement, but I'm not smart enough to figure it out. But one thing I did notice is this is way more sexually explicit than any other Russ Meyer film so far. I am smart enough to notice that. In a different part of the movie, two women are having some naked fun in the forest, and one of them straps on a uh, comically large um, thing that you strap on. <laughs> no, I can't show you. And then somebody dumps a piranha into Adolf's bath and it eats him. So a few minutes in, we've got some sex and we've got some violence and it's all wrapped up in this comedic style. Yeah, we're watching a Russ Meyer film. Kitten, the Greek chorus, she shows up again and tells us that this uh, murder of Adolf is somehow a great big mystery, but honestly, who cares about a dead Adolf? <laughs> Not me. And then it's time to meet the real star of this movie, the lovely Raven Delacroix. Delacroix? Delacroix? I don't speak French. But she's American anyway, so maybe it's Raven de la Crix. <laughs> Probably not. She's gorgeous and pretty funny at various times throughout the movie. She does a kind of like Mae West impersonation. Yeah, she's great. It's really too bad she's not in a better Russ Meyer film. She shrugs off the advances of the police and then accepts a ride from a local. The local gets handsy, she runs off, he catches up and has some grape soda with her, and then she kills him. I'm a strong woman, and yes, they did bad things, but I made them pay. The cop agrees to look the other way in exchange for, well, I bet you can guess what he wants to exchange for. I can't go on doing this all of the time. Why not? Then we hop over to a local diner and see a few familiar faces. One of the lesbians and the pilgrim. Turns out they're married and they own this diner. Paul mentions the two murders to the sheriff, uh, Adolphs and the guy that we just saw Raven kill. Uh, but the sheriff isn't interested in investigating. Instead, he suggests that they give Raven a job. So now we're about 40 minutes into an 80 minute movie. What's the plot? Who's the main character? I don't know. But to help us out, the Greek chorus shows up again and tells us that the murder of Adolf still needs solving. <laughs> but nobody in the movie is interested in solving that. And I'm not sure why anyone in the audience would be interested in solving that either. Really, just no, I'm not buying this as a narrative thread. So whatever, that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. This is not a good movie, but it is a Russ Meyer movie, so it's still pretty sexy and violent and funny. So it's not without its charms. There are a lot of beautiful people in this movie, and you don't have to go more than a few minutes without seeing them naked. And Russ really knew how to shoot naked people to make them look their best. Great camera angles, nice shot composition, excellent lighting. And all of this was improved by makeup. You might not know this, but he insisted on full body makeup for the actresses. 
So there are no blemishes, no pimples, no, you know, bright sections of oily skin. They all look perfect the whole time, just marble statues in jiggly motion. Pretty impressive. And beyond how good it looks, there are some pretty funny gags in this movie. My favorite is the sheriff's toes busting through his shoes. <laughs> it's one of the funnier orgasm representations I have seen. Okay, so that's sex and comedy. What about the violence? Well, the film actually does really well here, too. The prom attack is so-so, and nowhere near as good as the bathroom murder and super fixins, but at the end, we get an axe attack and a really, really great chainsaw kill. Seriously, as far as chainsaw kills go, this one is up there with pieces. I don't want to spoil it, and YouTube doesn't like that stuff anyway, but it's up there. But even with all that great stuff, it's not a great movie. Like a cop letting off a woman with a warning, it has some shortcomings. Well, like I said, this has got all the elements of a good Russ Meyer movie. It's funny, it's sexy, it's violent, but the sum here is considerably less than its parts. I mean, there's just no narrative thread to follow. I mean, we're supposed to follow the thread of the dead Adolf, but who cares about that? I mean, who are these people? How are they connected to all this? It doesn't matter. It's not interesting. There is no story. I mean, I guess it could be said that Rhett's kind of struggled with story through a lot of his career, but here near the end of his career, he pretty much abandoned story entirely, and the films really do suffer because of it. But if you don't care about that stuff, if you don't care about plot and are just interested in plots, then yeah, there's a lot to love here. But me, I'm a glutton. I want all of it. I want the sex and the comedy and the violence and I want it all to be in a story. So whenever I'm in the mood for 1970s Russ Meyer, I throw in Super Vixens.